Iceland has an incredibly unique uh, geology here. You know, it's a volcanic island, it's very active, and so you have a lot of regions where you have freezing water mixing with almost boiling hot water that's coming out of the Earth's surface. We're here to try and discover new antibiotics that we isolate from bacteria that have not been explored for their capacity to produce new antibiotics. The rate at which we're discovering new drugs has fallen drastically and we have not kept pace with the increasing rise of antibiotic resistance. And so it's time for us to find new antibiotics and new chemical structures. And so we have to go to these remote places to try and find things that, that really have not been found before. The entire discovery process can take anywhere between, on the short end, let's say five or six years, and on the long end, 10 to 15 years. We look for all different types of things like sediment, sponges, seaweed, and each of these different microenvironments will harbor slightly different types of bacteria. When we collect the samples when we're scuba diving, we have these little red tubes or plastic tubes that are sterile and we'll open up the tube and scoop a little bit of sediment or use a dive knife to cut a sponge off. Finding a new antibiotic that's going to go into a human is like searching for a needle in a field of haystacks. But the job must be done because we have no choice. We have to do it. You have to be realistic though. There's a high chance that we're not ever going to discover a drug. And there's a lot of failures in my field and the thing is we have to fail in order to succeed. We can return from the dive and go back to our mobile laboratory that we have set up either in our hotel room or in you know, somebody's family room that we happen to be staying in. And then we take the samples, whether it's sediment, a sponge, or seaweed, and we put them on these little petri dishes that contain nutrients. So this is basically food for bacteria. And then we allow a couple weeks or a month for the bacteria to grow, and then we isolate individual bacteria and we assess their ability to produce new antibiotics. Even if the compounds that we isolate are never antibiotics and, and never go into a human body, we can still use them to learn how a disease works or probe the mechanisms of a disease. And even that's useful because the more we know about how a disease infects us, the more we can design and develop new classes of antibiotics.